Hi gang, welcome back to the Henri Latina. Uh, today's topic is going to be back on illegal immigration. I am hard sell on that topic because uh, I served uh, with the Oregonians for immigration reform uh, back in the day when, um, uh, well I think it's still quite liberal, but back in the day we, we Republicans couldn't, remo uh, we couldn't move anything because uh, we were so um, entrenched in liberalism and, and it's still the same way but entrenched for 30 years which is um, making me wonder what the hell is going on with Oregon. Anyway, Oregon is a state kind of like California. It it's just has an issue with, you know, um, an overabundance of agriculture and, and the population of illegals coming up, but also uh, the drug cartels along with all the, the fruit pickers. Anyway, uh, I, I watched um, in horror um, the struggles of, of what it did to our rural community, especially in the demographics and way it, in the way it changed everything. Uh, we had meth as an issue uh, in our rural town, and I never thought that that would be an issue for our, our school children, but eventually um, it graduated on to heroin, which um, brought up by the cartels, would, which would give it to their kids, you know, our children. They would sell it in the schools, actually give it away in the schools, but uh, you didn't think that this would be a problem with middle class kids, but it was, and it, it impacted my daughter, who got very addicted and ended up into the sex slave trafficking industry in San Diego uh, on her way to wanting to become a big rap star. Uh, very young, uh, was on the San Diego Strip, uh, met a bunch of rappers, and really thought that this was her claim to fame, uh, but they actually took young girls and pimped them out, and she drove the little getaway car. Um, but they, they hooked her on heroin, and as she got more into her drugs and stuff like that, um, they were trying to convince her that she needed to hook along with the other girls that they, they kidnapped from Mexico. Uh, my father, who is a retired military, lived close by to where she was, and um, I, hadn't, I hadn't really um, informed my dad to really what was going on, but uh, he gets a call from me one day because we really didn't have time to involve the authorities and he had to there's the cuckoo i thought i could get this done before the cuckoo but we were kind of just running the gamut here but uh anyway my father um let it go right i have a hard time letting it go i want to smash that fucking cuckoo in oops potty jar anyway um my father uh, went up and got my daughter. Um, I got a frantic call. Um, she was losing um, cell coverage and juice from her battery, and she didn't know she'd have another chance to call me. Uh, she was all um, doped up and out of it and not doing good. So my dad went and, and, and drove up. Didn't take very long for him to get from San Diego to Los Angeles. Got her, brought her home, put her on a, a plane, and shipped her back to me. It wasn't very long and, until she was back on the streets uh, using again. And uh, we didn't have insurance for her, uh, but uh, she luckily was married to this military guy um, and he had insurance. And so we, she got herself into a, a rehab um, after, you know, hitting and gracing some of the Oregon uh, emergency ERs. So anyway, um, problem can happen to any middle class family and, and the reason I'm bringing this up is as a mother it's heartbreaking to see um, a child go through this and and it was senseless because you know um, the first time she ever tried this I, I asked her where she got it from and she was getting getting it from a Mexican kid so um, the cartels supply uh, the children and the children supply our children with that and if you don't think it's going to impact your family then you're very misguided uh, my daughter was an all-state swimmer. Uh, she was uh, on the Honor Society. Uh, she also um, was a runner-up for Miss Lincoln County. Uh, she was some of the people to people, um, you know, of the most successful people that Oregon picks your leaders uh, from the schools, and she went to camp with the people to people. Um, she was on the newspaper. She did some great speeches, speech team and debate always had held down a job, always was in the sports, and, and really was just a, an amazing kid, a um, dancer on a dance team, a cheerleader. I mean, she did it all. She was this Miss America. So she was the least likely kid that we'd ever imagine uh, ended up with a heroin issue. Uh, she's doing well now. Um, she's off that, um, but still, it took a long way for her to get there. And the reason I'm bringing this out there is as a mother, 
and as a, and a fellow American and as a person who cares about this country, um, we always wanted to say no to the pot coming across the border and, and, and saying, oh, we're going to be tough on the war on drugs. This was under the Bush era. But that was all a bunch of Bush shit because but basically what he was doing was the war on white people that got hooked on the pot, but he wasn't doing anything about the border or the cartels. And this is the first time in American history we have a president who is uh, standing up to the cartels and he's standing up to illegal immigration. And he is tackling this head on. And I'm really proud of Mr. Trump for what he's doing. And in fact, we are actually um, making some headway in illegal immigration and we're addressing the, the crime. And I just wanted to get this message out there because our lamestream media doesn't report the news. They don't tell the truth. And the liberals don't tell the truth either. And of course, if you oppose anything and you bring up the criminal aspect of illegal immigration, they call you a racist. I and mean, this is a Hispanic Heritage Month. And by the way, I'm Puerto Rican and half Puerto Rican. And I, I remember a bunch of racist liberals in Oregon telling me because I didn't speak Spanish that I'm not a real Hispanic. And you know what? I'm Puerto Rican and my heart goes out to the people of Puerto Rico. And I can't even pronounce it as well as Mr. Trump does. But anyway, what is a Puerto Rico? I can't do that accent. I'm sorry. And I am Puerto Rican. But you know, it doesn't make me any less Puerto Rican, does it, Bill? No. No, it doesn't. And, and I'm, a, I'm an American, though, at the forefront. And then we all come from somewhere. And so if we can have any kind of a heritage month, it should be American Heritage Month because we all come from other countries to, to be American citizen. And what is that American Heritage Month? Isn't that the 4th of July? Sort well, that's of. one day. That's one day. <laughs> but you know what? We should have a whole month of it, right? <clears throat> so anyway... Um, I, I just feel like, you know, this whole thing about racism has been blown out so that we don't have to do what we need to be doing. And they fail to um, address the, the little girls that are being brought over, um, sex slaves. Um, they fail to address how this impacts school kids and it impacts the elderly community and it, it impacts everybody. So until they come to your neighborhood and you can't walk safely around the streets at night, to walk your dog because you're afraid of some MS-13 gang member moseying along and shooting something out his windows at you. Um, you know, it's just, it's very unfortunate. And that is all. I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Trump for, for doing what you're doing. God bless.